afternoon. And let me first thank the organizers for uh, the chance that uh, have given us to discuss about heritage, heritage management, the values around heritage and their involvement uh, in a multidisciplinary way and a very inspirational way. I work in the Ministry of Culture. I'm an archaeologist by training, but then I moved on to contemporary history and anthropology. And now I am the head of the Department of uh, Modern Cultural Assets and Intangible Cultural Heritage in the Greek Ministry of Culture. Uh, what I would like to address uh, is uh, uh, the um, value of uh, intangible cultural heritage in any uh, uh, management plan and restoration plans of uh, built heritage and the management of natural uh, uh, environmental resources. So uh, let me first uh, say a few things about uh, the notion of uh, intangible cultural heritage and the convention, the UNESCO Convention for Safeguarding Intangible Cultural Heritage, which has been adopted by UNESCO in 2003, and since then it has helped to bring about a significant increase in international debate about not only the nature and value of intangible heritage, but also the meaning and character of heritage more generally. While it's a relatively new convention, uh, ratification on behalf of the states has gathered unprecedented momentum. In the first three years, it had been ratified by more than 130 UNESCO member states. This rapid process testifies to the great interest shown by the states and heritage professionals uh, about the, relating to the key concepts of the convention and also to the wide appreciation of its mechanism. Uh, more importantly, the implementation of the ICH Convention has contributed significantly not only to the re-examination of the dominant ideas about the role and meaning of heritage in contemporary societies, but also the development of new management and conservation or preservation practices. The anthropological approach to culture and the refocusing on social sciences on, of the social sciences on processes, not exclusively on objects, on buildings, or artifacts, have proved to be significant, have proved to be significant factors in the definition of heritage as an entity made up of various complex and interdependent expressions revealed through social customs. Today, uh, it is the diversity of the expressions uh, that create the definition <coughs> of heritage. This new definition uh, is very much dependent on the idea of the complexity of heritage, an idea that was not obvious uh, when the first the term of cultural heritage became uh, widespread. There, uh, we had the visual represent representations of, of uh, heritage expressions that were firmly anchored in built heritage. Uh, when we talked about heritage, we meant European monuments, the lost pyramids of Latin America, the national parks of North America, African habitats and sculpture, but uh, now these are no longer perceived as images par excellence of the heritage of humanity. Uh, we have acquired, we have given a new uh, meaning, a new dimension to heritage through the intermediary of the concept of intangible values. It is the quest for the meaning of cultural expressions that has paved the way for acknowledgement of a new approach to heritage. This quest, which has acquired greatest, greater importance in the last 30 years, has required us to identify the social <laughs> customs and systems of belief, including myths, of which intangible heritage is the sign and expression. The definition of intangible cultural heritage and its better appreciation as a source of identity, creativity, and diversity have therefore greatly con contributed to drawing a comp comprehensive approach to heritage, which now applies to both tangible and intangible uh, heritage. UNESCO defines uh, uh, intangible cultural heritage as the practices, representations, expressions, knowledge, skills, 
as well as the instruments, objects, artifacts, and cultural spaces associated therewith that communities, groups, and in some cases, individuals recognize as part of their cultural heritage. So intangible heritage is not something free-floating, ideas, myths, or anything. It is an all-encompassing uh, uh, idea. Uh, intangible heritage is manifested in the area in the following domains, oral expressions, and traditions, including language, language as a vehicle of intangible heritage, performing arts, social practices, rituals, and festive events, knowledge and practices concerning the nature and the universe, and traditional craftsmanship. In this presentation, I will go through four ICH intangible cultural heritage elements that are described in the National Inventory of ICH of Greece that is kept in the Directorate of Modern Cultural Assets and Intangible Cultural Heritage, that may help to broaden our understanding about the value of intangible heritage in general as a crucial factor for sustainable development and more specifically, uh, its great but not fully recognized potential in successfully carrying out restoration projects of built heritage in the most financially efficient manner. The first such element, Okay, the first such element that I will refer to is the uh, Tinian marble craftsmanship. Uh, built heritage is the product of craftsmanship of the past that is being put to use by craftspeople who share the then prevalent knowledge and practices concerning nature and universe. Those two domains of ICH are crucial in any re uh, restoration project. The restoration works in the Acropolis testify to that. The Tinian marble craftsmen are among the key workers there because they possess a unique knowledge of marble craftsmanship acquired in their birthplace in the island of Timor. The knowledge is acquired, ma is acquired mainly through non-formal education. Indian marble craftsmanship is based on the master uh, apprentice model of transmission, and marble craftspeople possess empir empirical knowledge of the composition and structure of the marble bearing rock, the properties of each kind of marble, and the manipulation of its veins. A part of this ICH element is also the making of the tools used in marble crafting. The forgers of tools in Timos are also providing tools to most restoration, restoration places all over Greece where marble or stone cutting is necessary. The exceptional tradition of Timian marble craftsmanship has been recognized globally and the element has been inscribed in the representative list of ICH of Humanity in November 2015. Traditional, but traditional craftsmanship, either in metalworks or in pottery, etc., is not the only manifestation of the value of ICH in modern societies and to the practice of heritage conservation. Even more important are manifestations of ICH that are linked to local knowledge and the local management of natural resources such as water in order to prevent floods or landslides. A good such example is the tradition of the sacred forests or Bakufia in Ibios, which we have recently inscribed in the Greek National Inventory of ICH. It is an element that combines local knowledge of sustainable water management and a system of beliefs concerning nature. Where this tradition is still observed, and uh, unfortunately it is only in Zaworoporia and Konixa villages today, it is combined with strict prohibitions on cutting wood from certain forests around the villages. Even excommunications have been used against the transgressors of the wood cutting prohibition. The tradition of sacred forests combines thorough observation and intimate knowledge of the flow of the water in the area, which with prohibitions that may verge on superstition. Nevertheless, it is of utmost importance for the protection of the villages. This intimate local knowledge of water, of water flows, 
exists everywhere in Greece, and its wearers are the people who live and work in the fields and in the forests, like shepherds, rural workers, etc. Their knowledge would be of great, of great use if it is taken under consideration in new building projects, the making of new highways and roads around the country, etc. But we must stress on intimate. This knowledge can only be obtained through the use of appropriate methods of the relevant social sciences, folklore and cultural anthropology in particular. <coughs> on the other side of Greece, on the arid environment of the Cyclades, the art of dry stone walling is the means to create a livelihood out of the windswept hills. Dry stone walling refers to stone construction without the use of mortar as binding material. The element is linked with customs and traditional practices associated with the organization of rural space. It has shaped numerous and diverse landscapes, forming various modes of dwelling, farming and husbandry, like creating terraces for cultivation, delineating boundaries of land, constructing seasonal settlements and shelters, managing water resources in a, in a sustainable way, etc. It is invaluable in preventing landslides, floods, and in combating desertification of the land. It also enhances biodiversity. It creates natural habitats for reptiles and insects, that many of them are endangered species. Moreover, it has been used in public works and artistic aspects of the craftsmanship have been acknowledged and accordingly exploded by contemporary artists. The landscape that features prominently in Greek tourism posters is that of the dry stone scales bordering the beaches. Dry stone also helps to bear in mind another important feature of traditional craftsmanship, the superior beauty of the handmade products. Currently, we have initiated a multinational file for the inscription of dry stone on the representative list of, the humani of humanity, and uh, the participation of interest states is growing. Most of the Southeast European states participate, along with France, Spain, and surprisingly, Switzerland. The last element that I want to refer, and I'll uh, close with that, is uh, wooden shipbuilding. Wooden shipbuilding is one of the greatest and most complex arts in modern and contemporary Greece. It is a craft based on the master-apprentice model of transmission, and corresponding hierarchical organization, but there are very many different aspects of this craft, a lot of specializations that have to be orchestrated by the master shipwright in a shipyard. The resu this results in long years of apprenticeship and laborious training. Nevertheless, it was a flourishing craft at least until the 1990s and widely spread in every corner of mainland or island Greece. Due to accumulating pressure coming from diverse environments, the EU policies on fisheries is just one, social security systems and their requirements another, etc. During the last decade, the number of trainees in traditional shipyards is dwindling, many small shipyards are shut down, and the master shipwrights are getting retired with no one to take up their place. The chain of, of transmission seems to be at a breaking point. We are currently paving our way in order to coordinate agents from different fields of public policy and the shipwrights themselves, <laughs> so that a coherent safeguarding plan can be devised and implemented. We need uh, to uh, instigate uh, vocational training courses we need to uh, orchestrate uh, tax and its insurance, social insurance policies. It's a very complicated field that we have to go through. But our prior prioritization of safeguarding this element is not solely driven by our scientific appreciation of its great cultural value. We are also uh, informed by economic studies that there is an eco a big economic potential in building wooden boats that now are used for leisure activities, for yachting and sea tourism activities instead of fishing and mar marine transport as in the past, 
a potential that can also create a considerable number of new jobs in the shipyards of unemployment stricken areas such as Parama, Syros, etc. The spirit of the Intangible Cultural Heritage Convention demonstrates vividly UNESCO's belief that culture should be considered a fundamental enabler of sustainability, a source of meaning and energy, a wellspring of creativity and innovation, and a resource to address challenges of the future and find, find a proper, appropriate solution. This is a belief we all share. Thank you.